to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron, this is Scott, and this is Tucker. And today we're going to talk about what it means to be an authentic Christian. Okay, so today we're going to talk about what it means to be an authentic Christian. Um, that's obviously the title of the show, The Authentic Christian. And so we've had, I think, six episodes leading up to talking about this. And that is, what does the word authentic mean? It means like real, yeah, right? Classic, yeah, original. There, I guess there's kind of true two meanings. to form. Yeah. True to form, classic, original. There's sort of two meanings to that word. One of the reasons we do the show is we want it to mean the authentic Christian. As in like, we're not these fake Christians that act like we have everything perfectly together. I mean, yeah, we, we're trying our best to do what the Bible says, right? right? And talk about real life, real stories, the things that we struggle with day to day. But we also want to talk about authentic as in what does the Bible actually teach about Christian living, about becoming a Christian? Because like there's the original. Original. Sure. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people in the world claim the title of Christian, but they don't actually follow what the Bible says. And that's sort of like, don't, um, don't misjudge Christianity by someone that misrepresented it. Yeah, that's a good quote. Yeah, I mean, in any, I just made it up. So, oh, that's um, good. Was, I've probably read something like that before. But. Aaron Gallagher. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're not putting that. Like, we don't have. We're not those people who are going to quote ourselves on Twitter. Yeah. Um. So anyway, <laughs> you've also got this idea of what does the Bible say about it? What about a, a lifestyle? You know, when you judge any religion, you shouldn't judge the religion by the people. You should judge it by the book. Yeah. Because I could look at somebody and say, well you know, well, that person is, you know, a nice person. Well, what if their religion teaches the opposite of that? You judge a person by the, the book, not their person, because they could not be following the book. So what we want to talk about today is what is Christianity? What is an authentic Christian? And really it's someone that follows the teachings of Jesus Christ. So mm -hmm. if you were going to look at following the teachings of Jesus Christ, where would you start in the Bible? Uh, I would probably start off in uh, maybe Matthew. Yeah. Um, reading through the gospel, reading yeah. through the things that he taught to the apostles that were following him there at that time mm -hmm. and uh, trying to learn how to apply some of those basic principles. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're trying to follow Christianity, which is following the teachings of Jesus, th there is something that we probably should also make clear. And that is that Jesus Christ lived his life under the law of Moses. Okay. Some people say, well, you should, you should be Jewish because Jesus was Jewish. Well, yeah, but the Bible teaches that Jesus fulfilled the law of Moses and took it out of the way. I'll go to Matthew chapter five. This is a passage that I've had many people before um, read to me, but they stop. They don't read the whole verse. So I've been talking about how Christ fulfilled the law of Moses and took it out of the way. And that's why we as Christians don't live under the law of Moses. Jesus said, Matthew five seventeen, do not think that I came to destroy the law or prophets. Now that word destroy means trample upon, to dishonor it. He's saying, look, I didn't come to dishonor the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy them. And they'll stop there. They'll mm -hmm. say, see, he didn't destroy the law of Moses. No, keep reading. But to fulfill it, for assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. That's what Colossians 2.14 talks about. I mean, it talks about Jesus nailed the law of Moses to the cross, fulfilled the handwriting of ordinances, which is against us, and took it out of the way. And so even though Jesus taught things that were going to be implemented in Christianity, the time, the, the covenant of Christianity, that doesn't mean we should be Jewish people, right? Right. I mean, can you think of anywhere in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, that talks about how we, one, one example of how we know that Christians are not under the law of Moses. Oh, Romans chapter seven, right? You want to turn over there real quick? Yeah, go to Romans <clears> seven. I think it's Romans chapter seven. And this is going to answer a question too. Yes, yeah, it's Romans seven, four through seven. Yeah. This is going to answer a question. When you look at what a Christian in the first century, when do they worship? The law of Moses, they worshiped on the Sabbath, Saturday. Some people will say like, well, Sunday's the Christian Sabbath. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says the Sabbath was done away with. And some people say, whoa, whoa wait a minute. Sabbath is one of the Ten Commandments. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But let's look at this verse. You might be surprised to know that Christians don't follow the Ten Commandments. Now, before I let you read, someone's oh going to say, well, someone's going to turn the channel. <laughs> it's like, no, of the Ten <laughs> Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, all nine of them are restated in the New Testament, except for which one? Sabbath. The Sabbath. Right. So Christians right. obey not. all of those Ten Commandments except the Sabbath. Right. So yeah, go ahead and make your point in Romans 4, okay. 7. Uh, Romans 7, 4 through 7. It's, it's a brief passage, but it's important to read it. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law 
by the body of Christ that you should be married to another. Dead to the law of Moses right. to be married to Christ. Right. Dead to what? Dead to the law to be married to what? Okay. Let's keep reading. Even to him who is raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, the law of Moses, mm -hmm. did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Now, how do I know which law? Verse 7, what shall we say then is law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For had I not known lust, except the law had said, and he's going to quote here one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not covet. So we know that we're dead to that law. We're dead to the mm -hmm. Ten Commandments, if you will. Like, like you've already stated, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. most of those are restated in the New Testament, mm -hmm. but we're in the New Testament now. It's, yeah. it's, it's not that old law. We know we're talking about that one because we have here that given as an example of that that law that we're dead to. Yeah. Like all. Romans seven, four, you're dead to the law. What law? The law of Moses. Why? Right. So you can be married to Christ. Well, what law of Moses? Well, then he goes down in verse seven, you're dead to the law of Moses. Verse four, verse seven, for that law said, thou shalt not covet. Now you want to look in the old Testament, you know where you're going to find thou shalt not covet the Ten commandments. Yep. Exodus 20. So the law of Moses was nailed to the cross, Colossians two, Ephesians two, many other passages, but, all of those are restated except for keeping the Sabbath. Right. So that's, that's the only one that's not brought in, if you want to say it that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not the one that's you know, yeah, brought in. That's a perfect way to, to explain it. So Jesus fulfilled the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. So now, as far as Christian living, you know, one, one thing, man, I remember years ago, there was this like really catchy video. It's like shot really well. It was this guy up on a stage in an empty high school auditorium. And he basically was like spoken word about how Christianity is not a religion. It's Jesus. And I thought, this guy doesn't know James 1, 26 and 27 is in the New Testament. Right. What, what does James 1, 26 and 27 say? Yeah, take a second to flip over there. Because there's this idea, and it sounds good, and I, I think I know what they're getting at. They're saying, basically, it's not this, like, going through the motions, but it's mm -hmm. a relationship with Jesus, which is true. You have to have a relationship you have to be yeah. known by him. But read James 1, 26 yeah. and 27. In James 1, 26, or James 1, 26, if any... If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion is that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So he says, if a man thinks he's religious, but doesn't bridle his tongue, his religion is worthless. Mm -hmm. In verse 27, what kind of religion? Pure and undefiled. Pure and undefiled. Yeah. That's right. And that's talking about what? Christianity. We're talking about Christianity. Yeah. Christianity is a religion. Yeah. I think we're afraid to say that, but we're also saying like it is also a relationship with God. It's it not is. Just, it's yeah. not just a checklist. No, yeah. but you are. I it's mean, you're both. obeying. Okay, yeah, you're obeying the commandments, but yes. you're living for God, and yeah. you know. Right. There is a law of Christ, right? Galatians six two. Yeah. Bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So Romans three twenty seven. Like, the like law, like law, law of faith. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like law's not a dirty word. No, I it's mean, not. it's a, it's a good thing. I mean, there is a certain law that we have to live under, yeah. and that law requires us to. Love one another. Yeah. To love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, yeah. and soul. To love what the second one is like unto it. Love mm -hmm. our neighbor. Absolutely. Love, yeah. I mean, so when you say law, you're not talking about something cold and dead and and just foreign to Christianity. No, you you're still talking about good things. Well, and the thing I think our world sometimes we, you know, it sounds good, but people don't check it against Scripture. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have you have this idea like if most people if you say you have to obey God's commands, that's how you show you love them. The first thing they say is legalism or Pharisee, yeah. Yeah. right? And I'm always like, do you realize what Jesus condemned the Pharisees for? Mm -hmm. He didn't condemn the Pharisees for this was God's law. They were doing their best to keep it. He condemned the Pharisees for making up their own man-made laws and saying, you have to follow our man-made law and you have to reject God's law, right? They didn't realize they were doing that. Yeah. Something going around in Christian culture that seems to last like, I don't know, five to 10 years is as long as I put Jesus's name on like on it, then it's right. So as long as I say, oh, I'm doing that because of Jesus or for Jesus, even if, it, you know, it doesn't match scripture, just saying, oh, well, I got grace, so I can do what I want. It, you know, it does mm -hmm. go back to if, if I want to be authentic, I got to look at there and see how they lived and loved and obeyed the scriptures and then compare that to my life. Yeah, that's 100% right. Yeah, I mean, just that argument alone. It's like, well, I have grace, so that means I can just kind of do what I want. Yeah. Anything goes, really. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Look, read Revelation 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. Read read what God said to the uh, seven churches of Asia. Mm -hmm. They had grace, 
They had mm-hmm. mercy. They were definitely not able to just do whatever they wanted. Matter of fact, what what there's several of them, uh, God using a certain strong language yeah. said those that follow her. I think it was talking about Thyatira. Yeah. Those that follow after her. Uh, Jezebel. Yeah, Jezebel. Yeah. I- I'll kill her and her children, yeah. which is not like literal no, physical course. children, but those mm-hmm. who followed her doctrine, yeah. Yeah. followed her into error. Jesus even said in there, you hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. It's yeah. like, yeah, Jesus hates some things. And the reason is because it'll basically cause people to be lost. Exactly. If you want to know what, Okay, if you want to know what Jesus was talking about, uh, at least one example, right? When he talked about how they would bind their traditions as the commands of God, right? Matthew 15 and Mark 7, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Here's one example, right? In between takes, I was in the restroom washing my hands, and I noticed I had a gray hair in my beard, right? And there are more and more of them. All right. This is the kind of law the Pharisees were making. Ooh, yeah, okay, you've heard this one? Yeah. So the Pharisees said on the Sabbath that a woman could not look in the mirror. Here's why, right? Now, that's not in the law of Moses. But here's why. If a woman looked in the mirror, she might see a gray hair and she might be tempted to pluck it. And if she plucked it, that was actually a form of reaping. And the law of Moses said that you can't do work and you can't reap your fields on the Sabbath. Yeah. So that is what that's the kind of hypocrisy (coughs) that Jesus was condemning with the Pharisees. Jesus never said, I can't believe you guys are trying to follow the law with a love for God. So that when someone says legalism, that's not what the Bible is talking about. Yeah, no. Jesus said, if you love me, keep your what? Commandments. If, if loving Jesus and keeping his commands makes me a legalist, well, guilty is charged. Yeah. But you know that's I mean? not what the it Bible. It literally go against scripture if, yeah. if you're arguing that. But, you know, the devil has always done a really good job of disguising terms. You know, if the devil wants you not to obey, obey God's command, what does he need to do? He just says, oh, man, I need to make that. Oh, that's unfashionable. You're yeah. a legalist, Scott. If you want me to obey God's commands, like. That's how I show I love Jesus. Yeah, we keep talking about relationship. Well, one yeah. of those things is being known by God, right? Knowing yeah. God and then God knowing you. What was he saying? Matthew 7, 21 mm-hmm. through 23, Let's right? read that one. Yeah, you got to go read. Ahead. You want to no, read you, it? I'm, I can flip over there. Okay, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then I, this is Jesus speaking, will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity. What iniquity? They Mm -hmm. didn't do the will of his Father which is in heaven. So doing God's will is part of him knowing you. So following the law, I mean, there's a law that we have to follow. And Mm -hmm. part of that is how God knows us because we are are following after his example. We're following Jesus' example. We want to be his brothers, his sisters. We got to be a part of the family of God. We got to act like we're part of the family of God, which means doing what God would have us to do. That's a terrifying passage, isn't it? Yeah. It really is in a lot of ways, right? I mean, you imagine because those people—they're not like they're not people who are atheists. Well, no, at that time they won't be, but they're not people who are claiming to be agnostics while their time was on Earth. They're claiming when they when I was on Earth, I was religious. I did many mighty works for you, and he says, "I never knew you." Depart from me. It does make you take a back seat and go, okay, am I just am I just wearing the name mm-hmm. or am I like wearing it and living it out? Yeah. I mean, basically many people think they're doing things for God, but God says if it doesn't match up to scripture. I mean, I, I kind of put that with 2 Corinthians 5 and uh, that's verse, verse 10. Because you said we have to be known by God, mm-hmm. right? So it's God doesn't know us, but I want to be known by God. 2 Corinthians 5, 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, right? Sort of similar to Matthew 7, 21, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. There's a teaching, Calvinism, which is that basically God elects you before the foundation of the world, not according to any sort of anything you've done. This says whether good or bad, what he has done. What I do on earth is going to determine where I spend my eternity, right? Verse 11 then, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are what? Well known to God. If we do the the will of the Lord, which is what Matthew 7, 20, they weren't doing. They were doing their own will. We have to do the will of the Lord for him to be be known by him. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. Are we going to do God's will or our own will? One of the best pieces of advice I got was, um, you can do this too, whether you're listening or you're watching, get a sheet of paper out and on one side, put like everything that you do by following God's word and everything, and then kind of just match it up to looking at the Christians and how they lived and acted and obeyed the gospel and like, just match that. And you know, it, 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 there are things that I was doing that I never realized that 
you know, the Christians in the New Testament, some people say New Testament Christian, and it seems kind of a weird phrase because mm-hmm. nobody really says that except for a select few. But, you know, you just look back at the New Testament Christians, the ones that were living for Jesus back then, mm-hmm. and you just match it with your life, and you mm-hmm. go, okay, I need to do that or change some ways. Well, it's like, if you go back and look at your New Testament 2,000 years ago, if that's what they did to become a Christian, which we're going to talk about that in the next episode, why wouldn't you do the same thing? Yeah. I mean, I heard somebody say, as, as an older preacher, and it stuck with me, I can't remember who it was, but he said, if it's new, it isn't true. If it's true, it isn't new. If something's not, I think it's Johnny Ramsey maybe, mm-hmm. if something's not 2,000 years old, it's not true. When you have a religion that's 200 years old, it's not true. I, I can promise you that. Jude 3 says the faith was once delivered for all time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the word, I think the word there is hapax, and it's the same word used of Jesus Christ basically being the sacrifice once for all. Mm-hmm. The faith's been delivered 2,000 years ago. If it's different now or someone says, well, it's new. Well, my religion started 200 years ago. Sorry. If Mm -hmm. it's not 2,000 years old and it doesn't match up with this, then it's probably another gospel. Yeah. 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 It's just everything everything that was needed when that verse was written, Mm -hmm. that we have all things that Mm -hmm. pertain unto life and godliness. Mm -hmm. Did they have it then or are we still waiting for part of it now? No, they had it then. Yeah. He said it right then, right then at that point, they had everything that they needed. The, yeah. the, the system of faith that God expected men to follow until he returns mm-hmm. and the end of the world is here, it was there. All the things they needed. Jude talked about it as well, Jude 3. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's not anything, we're not waiting for God to tell us on the next part. Yeah. yeah. If, so we were, T- Tucker, you were uh, basically touching on the fact of the way that they lived back then. We're going to talk about how someone becomes a Christian according to the New Testament in the next episode. But in this one, what are some examples? I mean, like if you were going to say, hey, does my faith match up with the people in the Bible, like the way they live? Because when we say our faith, faith is belief. It's, it's word in Greek is pretty much the same thing. So our belief in Jesus should influence our life. James 2 says, if you believe, that's great. James 2, 19, even the demons believe. John 12, 42, they believed in Jesus. They wouldn't confess him. If your faith doesn't move you to action, well, it's worthless. It's dead, right? So what would you look at, maybe some New Testament examples, both of you guys, about people who lived their way in a way that we should try to emulate? I love the book of Acts. Okay. Um, it was actually growing up, someone once said, like, man, those people got to stay away from Acts because people like to jump on that too much. But it's the book of conversions. Um, okay. One thing, the pattern that I noticed that my wife and I noticed is that whenever someone, like, heard Jesus or pre- preached Jesus or shared Jesus, mm-hmm. whenever they heard about this guy named Jesus, they like responded quick. It wasn't yeah. like, well, let me just think about it. Um, like when you hear that good news, I think about um, the eunuch. I mean, yeah. he responded very fast. I yeah. mean, he, he heard it and he he responded to the gospel. Um, the Philippian jailer at midnight, him and his whole family. That's right. You know, they heard such a good thing. They're like, I want to have a relationship with God. I want to have my sins washed away. You know, they it was that great that they had to do something about it quick and hold tight to that yeah. truth. Absolutely. That's great examples. What do you think? New Testament. Maybe a, I mean, it could be, a, it could be a parable. It doesn't have to be a specific person. It could be a person whose character was just like really epitomized. It could be a parable. Yeah. I think about the parable of the good Samaritan. Okay. And you talk about Christianity, what that is. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a parable giving by Christ, right? Yeah. And he's telling us about how we are to hold ourselves in terms of our character. Most people are familiar with the parable of the good Samaritan. It's a long parable. I don't want to read the entire thing, but sure. the gist of it is this. There's a man who, regardless of the social circumstances, regardless of what it might mean for him and what it might cost for him, Mm -hmm. he's willing to take care of others. So you're talking about authentic Christianity? Yeah. Well, part of it is, yes, we talked about it's following the the will of God. Well, that's part of following the will of God is being able to help other people, willing to help other people. You know, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about the definition of love and what that is. Mm-hmm. And it's not any one of those characteristics, but it's really the sum of those characteristics. You want to be an authentic Christian? Yeah. You've got to be willing to take on all those virtues and embody them and live them out day in, day out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's following, like you said, the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's kind of like, it's funny, it's, it's following in that context of Luke 15 too. And the Pharisees and scribes complained about Jesus. And what do they say? This man receives sinners and eats with them. Yeah. So he spoke this parable and he, he talks about the hundred sheep, right? He's basically trying to get them to understand, look, I came Luke nineteen ten to seek and save the lost. I'm here to help people. If we're Christians, 
that should be our goal too. I mean, Jesus was not afraid to go eat with the people who were, you know, not the most righteous, but his yeah. point was always, it wasn't to go indulge in the things they were doing. It was to guide them back uh, to Christ. And that, I mean, that's really our mission because really the Bible we're, we're unworthy servants too. Well, if you think about Paul, like, you know, he was killing Christians yep. and he meets Jesus and then his whole attitude changes. Like, I mean, he, he killed people and then he's actually yeah. with the people he was killing. And so he's carrying all this baggage and now he's saying like, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I'm with you guys, yeah. you know, with which we, we haven't really touched on a whole lot, but the church, you know, like he's, he's now part of the church and people are in the church, you know, I think they're afraid of this guy. He's like, he's the one killing us. And yeah. yet like, he's like, all right, now I'm with you. So with Jesus, it's like, you, no matter where you come from, you can have your sins forgiven, and then we're in this together after that. And G, it's funny, in First Timothy, um, starting in verse 14, this is what Paul wrote to Timothy. And Paul's talking about how his conversion was a pattern, basically. He says in verse 14, uh, let's see verse 13, I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly, verse 14, 1 Timothy 1. The grace of our Lord Jesus was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. And then he says this, however, for this reason, I obtained mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering. That word means patience as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. So Paul says, I was the chief of sinners, but Christ showed his patience towards people, which the Bible says he has patience towards all people. Mm -hmm. And he says, basically I'm a pattern. The way that I did it is how the rest of you should yeah. do it. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode, and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today. Another example of what I think <clears throat> exemplifies authentic Christianity, one of my favorite is Gaius from 3 John. <laughs> and I know it's a very short book, and I've mentioned it before in some previous episodes in yeah. passing. But he's instructed on what to do when he's dealing with the struggle with diatrophies there. Mm -hmm. Right? There's diatrophies who loveth to have the preeminence among them and receiveth us not. Right? This mm -hmm. is a man who's like saying, no, we're not even going to take the apostles yeah. or the prophets or anything like that in among us in the church here. Doesn't receive us. Yeah. If John's writing this, he right. won't receive an apostle. That's right. <laughs> and so Gaius is there. He's at that location, a member of that congregation, and he's getting uh, he's getting praised really mm -hmm. by John. He's saying, do us faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, mm -hmm. Third John 1 verse 5. So Gaius is a man who's who's showing hospitality to the church. He's showing it to, to strangers, and he's doing it that he might be able to help the gospel, right? He, he's helping those who are going out to be fellow helpers to the truth, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And so you're talking about authentic Christianity, especially today, mm -hmm. especially in the environment that we're facing right now in a lot of congregations where people's criticism mm -hmm. is like, no, there's a lot of hypocrites in the church. You want to be an authentic Christian? Yeah. Don't just say, well, there's hypocrites there. I don't want to go. Yeah. Go there and be the change, right? Yeah. As they say, go there and be mm -hmm. the example. Be the Gaius yeah. at that congregation, not the diatrophies. Don't run away because there's struggle. Yeah. Stand up and fight the way the Lord would have you fight, which is by doing the truth yourself, living that out. No, oh, I mean, that's spot on. I mean, you, you think about that. If I heard uh, my older brother said this once, he's like, if there was a perfect church, we wouldn't be allowed in. Yeah. As you soon know? as you found one, it wouldn't be that anymore once you got there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> and that's, that, yeah. that's the thing. God's not, God is not unaware of how we are as humans. I mean, in first John chapter one, verses six through 10, he talks about walking in the light. Let's go there. Let's go okay. to first John. Um, I was going to go to Matthew 25, but first John chapter one. Uh, first John. Yeah, it's a great book. First John chapter one, verses six through 10 is talking about walking in the light. Verse seven, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the light, Christ is the light. John one, six through nine, right? Mm -hmm. His teachings are right. the light. Um, if we walk in the light, if we live our way according to Christian principles, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son cleanses us from all sin. Then in verse eight, it's like God basically says, look, I understand that you're going to sin at times. Verse eight, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If you say you don't ever sin, you're a liar. God knows that Christians are going to sin. Yeah, right? We're going to mess should, up. It should never be a habitual practice, which is what some of the next verses and in, into chapter two talk about. Yeah. But God's aware of that. The church, you're not going to be perfect. If you go to a church that has issues, great. Saddle up and work hard and try to help other people, you know, and try to work to make that church help them reach the local community. One thing I want to share is that yeah. we know that whether you're watching or listening, there's a lot of different faiths out there that are being preached mm -hmm. like 
tons of them. Like I grew up with in a small town, um, amazing people, but there were like, you know, different denomination down the road, everywhere you went. And so we know that things can get really, really confusing. But what's so awesome is that God is not a God of confusion. Um, and so if you look to his word, one verse I had actually pointed down whenever you are talking is second mm-hmm. Thessalonians two fifteen. Mm-hmm. So then brothers stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. So these guys had the Holy spirit. Mm-hmm. They wrote the sounds of pattern, like you said, so we can just follow it. So even though things get really, really confusing in, in this life, like at the end of the day, when you're in your bed at night, looking up in the stars, you know, God made them. You know that if you're following this word, then you're okay. Yeah. And if you're doing the things it says to do. When you talked about the word tradition, in the Bible, there's good tradition and bad tradition. Sometimes people hear the word tradition and they think, well, that's bad. Well, no, that's good. There, there are some religious groups that teach that they make the tradition. If you look in the New Testament, you see good tradition, which came from the apostles, their spoken word, their letter, right? So we have here. This is the apostles. The word means what's been handed over, handed down. So then you also have man-made traditions. Yeah. When a man not inspired by God makes a tradition, it's bad. When God makes traditions, we're supposed to follow them. You know, what does it mean to be an authentic Christian? That word, Christian is a name. First Peter basically says, glorify God in that name which you're called. Some people think the name Christian is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 62, there's a prophecy. It says, the Gentiles shall see your righteousness, all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. Now, if you flip all the way in your New Testament to Acts chapter 11 and verse 26, it's funny that they're called disciples before this point. Do you know that God didn't give them the name Christian until Jew and Gentile were brought into the church? Hmm. The church is made up of Jew and Gentile. God waits till they're both in to give them this name. And in Acts eleven twenty six, the word there, let me just pull, pull it up my Bible, uh, Acts eleven twenty six, the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. That Isaiah 62 prophecy, they're going to be given a new name, was 700 years before this. They're given this new name. That word krematizo, krematizo means given by God. So God gives them the name Christian. We're supposed to glorify God in that name. Right. So as Christians, we're proud of that name. That name yeah. wasn't given in derision, as some people say, but God gave it to us. And it's beautiful because there's no longer Galatians 3.28, Jew or Gentile, right? I mean, in a sense, we're dealing with all kinds of stuff with race in this country. There's one race, Acts 17. Yeah. yeah. We are all, we just have different what amounts of pigment oh, in our skin. We all bleed the same. That's right. And yeah. so we're all one race, one blood in the church. All came from Adam and Eve. That's right. And then Noah and his family. Yeah. So there's neither Jew nor uh, Gentile. We're all one in Christ. That's right. So that's why we love being Christians. One we're, thing I, I think I mentioned in an earlier episode was mm-hmm. um, something I'd heard. Got about 10 seconds. So not really. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, hey. It's been a great talk. You got to come back next episode to see what Tucker (laughs) says. Thanks for tuning into the Authentic Christian Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network, or GBN for short. You can hop on the App Store, search Gospel Broadcasting Network, and you can download the app. And there's this show, many other great shows that you can watch or listen to. Start learning more about the Bible and uh, why we're here, what our purpose is. Thanks for listening.